uh, next question is if I could tell a bit more and give some advice on different methods of protection from the perspective of spirits and beings from other dimensions. And if I could share a little bit about what I know of this. So, um, if you look at a human being from the uh, perspective of a spirit, generally you would see kind of like dimly glowing uh, clouds of, uh, of energy. So the same way when we look up into the sky we see a kind of a fluffy white energy which yeah seems to give off a little bit of light but it is not really bright. So this is how most people look to them. Uh, it's just a fluffy like kind of a candy cotton uh, energetic weave uh, which is around our bodies and it usually has some strands going off to people we have an interest in or we feel a connection to like your dog, your cat, your spouse um, things like this, your favorite toy um, so from their perspective um, also usually energies are very much like candy cotton like you can try to chew a bit on it but yeah it's, it's kind of nice has some sensation to it but it's not very satisfactory it is not real meat and potatoes food um, so these energies which are yeah, fluttering around uh, they can sustain you they can keep you going but it's not really interesting food it's just sugar so what spirits and other beings are usually interested in are the more yeah, uh, hearty uh, types of food which uh, can also exist in our energy bodies. So from their perspective these are the things which have color and which are often more, uh, more bright or powerful and in general these are emotions or fixations or traumas because when we have a trauma uh, all of our energy is balled into one spot. So all our attention, all our life force, all our emotions, all our imagination it is concentrated on that one moment where we try to survive or try to manage. So these are really, uh, instead of just fluffy candies, this is really highly concentrated food. And these um, like unprocessed events, which everybody has, um, attract such beings. So in general, we can say that if a person has had a very uh, yeah, big shocking event, they are more vulnerable um, or more interesting to these uh, types of beings. Um, our best defense is actually to deal with these problems ourselves and to un not our energy so it can flow normally again and then again we are a balanced normal healthy person not that interesting to them uh, but while our energy is all tied up in our anger or in our fear or um, in a depression uh, then we're very interesting to them uh, the problem is that we often feel that uh, by being in such a state is helpful to us so our anger gives us a sense of power, gives us a sense of control. So many uh, spirits play little games with us. So they start teasing us a little bit, uh, making us awake at night or uh, just irritating us. And then we get really angry like, get out, this is my house, be gone. And then the spirit absorbs all this energy and he goes off to yeah, yeah, burp up on the couch and with all the energy they've taken from us by making us angry. And we ourselves feel like, oh, I drove away this nasty spirit which was bothering me. I'm great, I'm powerful. Uh, I'm also a little bit tired now, but I'm very satisfied because the spirit is gone. And we end up in a vicious cycle because that spirit, after it has digested all the energy we gave, it gave to us, it will come back for more. So, not always will these methods be very successful. 
Um, what you need to do is to find out what type of spirit you're attracting. And this is usually a very good indication of what parts of yourself you need to work on. And it also means that you can use other energies to fight those spirits, because generally spirits are only interested in one type of energy, so they only feed exclusively on fear, or on anger, or on sadness, uh, or on obsession. And if you use something else, then they can't control you, they cannot feed off you. So for instance, if something is trying to make me very angry, and I instead go into obsessive behavior, like, okay, I will just go and count all the tiles on the wall, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I don't release my anger, I actually cool down my anger by going into my obsessive self, then the spirit is going to be rather, yeah, sad and disappointed, no anger to feed upon, okay, I'll go. And in the same way, if for instance, there's a spirit who feeds on fear, and you become angry, and you say like, No! Get out of here! I'm not going to be afraid of you. I'll do whatever I want. I'm going to be brave, and if there's a problem, I'll deal with it. <laughs> then there's no fear for it to feed upon. So, in a way, changing your pattern, and also regularly, also keeps from too many of these energetic leeches accumulating in your energy body. So change is good, having a wide range of emotions also tends to help a lot. Um, because also if you practice yourself by calling up your anger, calling up your fear and controlling it yourself, you're binding these energies to you. And the stronger an energy is bound to you, the more difficult it is for a spirit to feed upon it. So the entities really feed upon uncontrolled emotions. If you are controlled or overpowered by your fear, by your anger, which is yeah, bl yeah, blurring your thoughts and blotting out everything else, uh, then you're vulnerable. But if you decide yourself, like, okay, this is not working, time to get angry, or, jeez, I'm really tired, I should really take some time off and I go into a depression and focus on myself right now and what to do and do I really want to live like this? You're using it. And by using it yourself, you're preventing other beings from using it. Because the energy is more close to you, so you will pull it back in, into your core, where the spirits cannot reach it very easily. So if you feel, for instance, like, okay, there are some powers around me which are making me stressed or afraid or angry, then it is very good to say, like, okay, I will own that energy, I will pull it into me. And also feel that you can change your energy. You can change anger into fear and fear into obsession and obsession into depression. It's all just energy and it can change form depending on what your spirit wants, what your spirit needs, what your spirit desires, and the quality of your life force to fuel the transformation process. So if you have a healthy energy body, you don't have to be stuck in any emotion. It's always a choice. And it requires practice. But if we don't practice, and if we don't use our energies, I don't think things will come to do it for us and we don't want that so it is very much of great importance to take personal responsibility because if you have a very passive attitude like okay um, i have a condition i have a mental illness so i can't help how i feel or um, how i how i act um, it's never going to get any better you'll keep on getting bothered there's nobody to help you in these matters except you. And it's also very much of an evolutionary process. Because the things you interact with energetically, they ultimately also determine the quality of your energy. And the quality of your energy determines your where you will go after you release your body and where you will incarnate when you do reincarnate again. So, if I'm a very unaware person who's just 
getting angry, if people provoke me, getting sad, if people hurt me, and I allow myself to be influenced and controlled both by the physical people and by the energetical people around me, then um, ultimately my energy level is also going to descend to the level of these yeah, energy leeches. And I won't be able to yeah, take human form in anymore because apparently it's too difficult for me. I can't handle it. I can't deal with the complexity. So go back to being a simple creature who lives off anger or fear. The, con the opposite is also true. Because if I start working with the energies, I'm also in a way um, teaching or forcing the uh, parasites which want to feed on me to also to evolve. Because if I bind my energy to me and if I control it, then also my leech will have to work much harder to pass my defenses, to get the energy away from me. So it is being pulled up to a more human level. So it is a constant interaction we are having with each other. They can drag us down, but we can drag them up if we want to. And in the same way, we are also dragging down higher spirits, gods, goddesses, angels, guides, by asking them to come down to us to help us because we can't deal with things. And they are uplifting us so that we eventually may help them or support them. So it's very much a fluid system. You cannot say like something is uh, by definition good or bad, it is just at a certain position at any moment in time. And these positions tend to go up and down, up and down in various lives. And we can only hope that ultimately this cycle of going up and down will have a positive trend or a negative trend. And these things depend very much on our ability to remember ourselves. Because if we are doing things with a lot of conviction, with a lot of focus, and we really give ourselves to a process, and this process can become a stabilizing factor, and it will allow us to gather knowledge and experience for many lifetimes, and use all those things as tools for purpose we want to reach. So we need to have a will, a vision, which spans many lifetimes, many incarnations. And once we have that commitment to something greater than ourselves, then we can really use that commitment to make sure that all our cycles move us towards that point. We need to anchor our lives. Otherwise we're just drifting up and down, up and down. And maybe up, maybe down. So there is very much a method to yeah, ensuring that we move forward. And um, ultimately, it never gets easy. Because on every level of existence, there are challenges. Otherwise, there would be no evolution. There would be no growth. Um, so the idea, of if you defend yourself better, your life will be easier, yes. In a way, that's true. The same problems which are bothering you now, in forms of spirits and energetic parasites, they won't bother you anymore. But you will get new challenges, new problems on a higher level. But this is ultimately progress. And we have to be grateful if, instead of the same problem chasing you around for 20 years, you were handed a new problem. It's progress. Really, it is. <laughs> may not seem like it. Okay, so a little bit more about uh, protective techniques. So, um, one which is used a lot and advocated a lot is to envision white light. Uh, white light is an effective protection technique uh, because it is white light is a little bit like fire. It burns away things. Um, it's very destructive as well as creative technique. So um, the white light will keep yeah, all kinds of spirits and other things away. And you can even uh, use it to, to lock them into a room or into a place. But the white light will also sever all your connections with the people around you, with the world around you, with um, 
also the higher beings around you, you will completely isolate yourself. And also, since the white light is destructive, also you will burn up your own energy body. So white light is a very good short-term solution. Okay, then we come to black. Black has been uh, a protective energy, which has been used a lot in uh, shamanic traditions. And the blackness really acts as a, as a cloak, because our energy, as I said, is lightly luminescent. So it's a little bit like being in the dark and you see a source of light somewhere. So we are attracting it, just like a lamp is attracting all kinds of insects. And by using a black cloak, they cannot perceive it. They become invisible to them. And black energy is a very passive energy, so it doesn't harm our own energy body. So I would suggest that people use black rather than white for protective purposes. White is very useful if you want to destroy something or create something. But for if you only want to protect something, not change anything, go with black. So one of the colors to in a way, avoid um, would be the, the, the brown color. Uh, often, like the parts of ourselves which we neglect, uh, they're brown in color from the astral perspective. And these brown spots in our energy bodies tend to attract a lot of these beings. So, brown is a no no. Uh, another very a uh, popular one, and I like this one a lot, is the Golden Egg of Love. It's uh, basically a, 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 I believe a Hinduistic method of envisioning a golden egg in your heart, and it is growing, 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 and it is transforming everything it touches by the power of its love. It is turning your enemies into your friends, into your allies, and thereby harmonizing your relationship with the world around. Uh, this is a very nice one to use, um, and um, I heartily yeah, uh, suggest that people uh, uh, people utilize this, uh, this method. It's also very important to focus it not only outward, but also inward, that you start to use this act of love also to feel what are parts of myself which are not helping me, which are not harmonious with me, which are not cooperating with me, and also use this love energy to bring them along, make them a part of you, reintegrate these parts of you. Um, then we have, of course, the, uh, the glamour. Uh, the glamour is used a lot in, uh, in witchcraft. Uh, the glamour is basically you, in a way, change the outside of your energy body to make it resemble something else. So you can make yourself seem an animal, or an old woman, or a young girl, or uh, attractive, or repulsive, or whatever you want. The glamour is very effective if something specific is, is chasing you. If they know what your energy looks like, and something is looking for that energy, then the glamour is, uh, is the perfect tool to, uh, to escape. Um, it doesn't help very much against just the random parasites, though. Because even though you change the energy body, there will still be the underlying weaknesses in your own energy body, which are uh, affecting you. So if you go a step deeper than the glamour and go into shape changing, um, shape changing, you're really altering the energetic structure of your body. So, um, by reshaping it, the, a lot of the typical yeah, traits which your energetic body has, they also disappear, including well, a lot of the traumas, the weaknesses, hang-ups and blind spots. Um, so this is very good to get, yeah, to shake loose the parasites, but also your new form uh, will also have weakness. So ultimately, if you spend a lot of time in a new form, that new form will also yeah, build up uh, parasites. But for yeah, regular cleansing, shape changing is, uh, is an excellent method to use. Because it also really allows you to be completely aware 
as you're changing your body that certain things are coming loose, detaching yourself themselves from you. So you know, okay, these are weak spots where my life force is weak or my yeah, ethereal body or my astral body is storing some kind of pain or trauma or uh, yeah, other things which are holding me back. So it gives a lot of information to, to shape change. Um, you can also use your, um, your ancestors or your uh, allies from the spirit world to ask to build a protection around you, a cocoon around you. Um, this is also very useful. Uh, also by inviting the spirits in, they tend to try to purify you because they exist in a higher world, usually in a higher consciousness. And when they come down, they find themselves being assaulted by all your hang-ups, frustrations, uh, emotions, and traumas, and they dislike that. So as far as they can, try to clean up your body, so channeling itself, working with spirits, uh, power animals, is also very purifying for the energy body. Uh, ultimately though, they cannot take away your lessons from you, they shouldn't. So there are some things you have to do yourself, but a lot of the standard non-interesting maintenance can be done by your, uh, by your allies and your friends. Um, it is also possible to work with very specific um, protection forms like amulets and talismans. So you can pull certain energies towards yourself to help strengthen your energy body. And you can also uh, create blockages uh, so certain energies cannot come to you. Uh, but it's a very effective method. Um, ultimately it would be good if you can do these things by yourself instead of dependent on a tool because if you have to walk with crutches all the time your own legs uh, yeah don't get any exercise they will go, grow weak so amulets and talismans use them if you need them but try not to use them continuously uh, it can be avoided uh, depends very much on the circumstances and your own constitution for instance, you're a very sensitive person and you're working in a place, for instance, a, a mental uh, hospital, um, then you might need daily protection, daily support to deal with that type of environment. Um, in the same way as yeah, a person yeah, working in a lab will wear a lab coat or a person yeah, working with dangerous chemicals will a respirator or a gas mask to protect themselves because the environment is so toxic, so dangerous. And this is also important to really look at your environment because if your environment is continuously draining your energy body, uh, then also you become very vulnerable to infection. Uh, your ability to counter infection um, is very much dependent on your self-awareness and your life force. So a person who is very unself-aware, as I said, the energy tends to be a little bit chaotic. And when the person is weak or sick, then it actually becomes from more or less solid cloud. It is perceived by them as a wispy cloud, so there's holes in it. So people who have drug use, injury, or sickness, they tend to have yeah, holes in them, which makes it easier for spirits to go more deeply into the energy body, to get closer to your energetic core. And the closer they come to your energetic core, the stronger their effect will be on your life force. So usually the first yeah. feeling you get is just a feeling, there's something around, then more strongly they will start to influence your thoughts, even more strongly they will start to influence your emotions and ultimately when they get in deep enough they will start to influence your body, your health directly. And from influence it can go up to control that they in a way think your thoughts for you, they feel your emotions for you and they will ultimately uh, control your body and your body will start doing things which you don't will it to do. Uh, so this is how an infection can, uh, yeah, can deepen. Um, so 
but it's very important to also take periods where you can just uh, rest, recuperate, strengthen your life force, but also be in an environment which has a very high vibration. If you're out in nature like this, um, you're in a way absorbing the harmonious energy around you, which makes your own energy become lighter, which pulls you away from the realm where most of the parasites reside. And if you're in a city and in a stressy job, your energy body will descend and you will in a way be lowering yourself into a snake pit where all these parasites live. So it's good to get out every once in a while to shake them off. Uh, that's the most important thing. It's a continuous process, just like fighting off infections. But by yeah, a healthy diet, exercise and change, you can keep yourself healthy.